Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Our climate system is clearly undergoing abrupt changes at the moment. Nowhere is this more obvious than in the Arctic. The Arctic is getting a lot darker. We're losing uh, snow cover mostly in the spring. We're losing sea ice. It's becoming darker. This darker region is absorbing a lot more solar radiation and causing huge temperature amplification. So the Arctic sea ice minimum, which happens usually mid-September, occurred this year. It was the second lowest on record. 2016 is the blue line. Compare it to the 2012 record minimum. And you can see that um, the, what's happening now, though, um, in early November, is we're seeing the, we saw the ice reforming in 2012 nicely, although it was much lower than the mean, um, the long-term average, or the standard deviation, it was much below those curves. But right now, we're seeing that the ice is nowhere, is not forming properly. What's happening is as the sea ice extent tries to grow, it runs into the extremely high sea surface temperatures and gets basically cut off. So look at the trajectory of this curve. So we're, there's always, in the last few years, there's become more and more and more um, of these unexpected effects occurring um, unexpected to the majority of people, to the majority of climate scientists, but not really unexpected to me. Um, you know, I've been studying these type of things uh, for a long time, trying to connect all the pieces of the climate system. There's not enough people that do that. We have a world of specialists. We need people to look at the overall picture and put things together. So let me say what's going on here. What's really, let's have a look in, at some of the details. So this is the minimum um, from 1981 to 2010, sort of the, the sea ice extent at the minimum. This is what happened in 2007, the blue line, 2012, this line here. And what we see, the actual ice that you see here is what happened in 2016, September of 2016. So, so we're, we're coming off of a relatively low year. What's different this year is the ice is a lot thinner than it was. There's almost no multi-year ice and the thick ice that would normally be ridged up along the Canadian archipelago does not exist anymore. The ice is not ridged up um, and as a result, the ice could trickle through the Canadian archipelago. This is another new phenomena that happened this year. So this uh, shows the uh, sea surface temperatures. The sea surface temperature anomaly for November 4th, 2016. So that's um, the anomaly is the difference from the long-term average. So what you can see is very warm pools of water here, very, very warm pools of water here. And if we look up specifically in the Arctic, this is the outline of the ice here. And this is, the water is extremely warm all around. In fact, these regions here are eight degrees Celsius warmer than normal. These regions, this vast region is, you know, all of this red is above a degree varies from a degree to about eight degrees Celsius warmer than normal. So it's surrounding the ice. So of course, as the ice tries to expand, um, the sea ice extent, it's getting clipped. It's getting melted. It reaches a very warm water. It's not just warm. This is sea surface temperature. It's also warm below as you go deep into the water, as you show, and combined with large wave action, which mixes the water, as we lose this, as the sea surface temperature drops because of the radiation of heat uh, up to space, the long wave radiation, that because there's mixing, that warm water on the surface is replaced by warm water below and the process repeats. So the ice is 
is confined um, until it warms up all of that water in the water column, it's not going to form properly. If you look at the actual, uh, if we go back here, and if you look at the actual temperatures, so this is the sea surface temperatures, not the anomaly, and if we look up in this Arctic region, then the, uh, because the freezing point of seawater is about minus 1.8 Celsius, if you go above that, you start getting melting depending on, because it's mostly first year ice, so the salinity of that ice, it'll only be 35 uh, parts per thousand, it'll be something like 10 or 15. Um, so it'll be melting, you know, when you get below zero, somewhere between zero and minus 1.8, probably about minus one, it'll be melting. So um, if you look at this blue region here, this is where the ice is here. So here, you know, you're starting, this is a, a surface, this is a surface water, but the water below is warmer, as I'll show you. That's a characteristic of the Arctic. So what's happening in terms of the mean temperatures um, in the atmosphere? So what's happening here is this is the long-term norm, and this is where we are this year. So much warmer than normal here. And instead of dropping off, as we would normally expect, where it's extending over at a very high region. So and this re as we go further out, okay, there was a dip here, but then it's starting to recover here. So if we follow this trend down, this is very unusual this year. Um, in the 2012 minimum year, there was some extension here, but nothing like what, in, you know, fluctuation here, but not like what we're seeing here. If we go to 2007, similar thing. Um, in the last few years, you know, you can see an extension above this green curve and on both wings, but that extension is uh, very, like, it's more pronounced. It's, this is, and especially this rise here, I mean, what's going on here? So if we look, we can get all kinds of data from the reanalysis or systems research laboratory, laboratory reanalysis data. You know, we can look at, say, sea level pressures averaged over 30 days, for example. So this will be the pressures, this will be the anomaly, um, and you can see the red areas are going to be you know, higher, higher, the, the pressures are higher there. Um, these are the areas that are the higher temperatures. Um, there's all kinds of, you know, we can look at the, all kinds of data. We can look at what the jet streams are doing. Um, we can look at the surface temperatures over the last 30 days from the reanalysis data. So this is the um, temperature anomaly here over the last 30 days and this is six degrees. So all this red area is over six degrees. The red and orange is over five degrees. If you go from the yellows, you're above three degrees. So the entire Arctic has been extremely warm over the last month. So it's no surprise that the seawater is still warm and not forming uh, as it should. Um, this is showing a temperature map Anything green is above zero. You can get, we're getting large extensions of warm air into the Arctic. This is climate reanalyzer. If we look at the temperature anomalies, look at this whole region up here. 15 to 20 degrees warmer than normal over vast parts of the Arctic. And in fact, the whole Arctic here, 5.84 degrees Celsius you know, going up even to six degrees and so on. The Arctic is a blast furnace compared to what it should be. Now, if we look at the temperatures, okay, so we're talking about this area of this light blue area is just below zero. Okay, so this is the actual temperature and this is, this whole area in here is in the range from minus, you know, it's mostly about minus 10 or so degrees. So this is with a 20 degrees Celsius temperature anomaly. Once we go up a little bit higher to a 30 degree anomaly, 
then this whole region is going to be above zero. And this is where we're heading. I mean, these anomalies are very, very large in the Arctic. You know, why are they so large? Is, is this partly because of the higher methane up there? Um, is there, you know, higher CO2 levels definitely up there? Um, you know, and a lot of that w cold air is actually coming down. Um, and, you know, people talk about the polar vortex, which is a bit of a misnomer for describing the weather over North America when this cold pool comes down, but that's what the meteorologists have been calling it. So these huge anomalies, they'll reach a threshold. You know, although it's 15 or 20 degrees warmer than normal in the Arctic right now, it's still below zero. We're still getting some formation of sea ice. You know, we don't have to go that much further in an anomaly to be above zero, and the sea ice will continue to decrease this time of year in early November. You know, once we do this, we, we will have crossed that threshold of zero degrees Celsius when the stuff freezes, or slightly below because of the salinity, and we'll be in a completely different climate. The Arctic is losing snow and ice, and we'll rock it up. And then it doesn't matter what humans do too much. Um, and we can't just, you know, it does matter what we do, but just reducing fossil fuel emissions will not be sufficient. This is why we actually have to cool the Arctic and we have to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. I talk about the three-legged bar stool or the three-legged stool approach. Zero slash fossil fuel emissions, cool the Arctic, remove CO2 from the atmosphere. We need to do all of these things. Um, this is in terms of the volume, continuous decline here. I won't talk too much about that. This is cryosphere data, looking at the ice thickness. So this is the ice thickness, um, the, a 28 day average. And you can see, you know, there's almost no, this is, the red is about three meters. There's almost no thick ice left. It's, it's very, very thin ice. As a result, it was moving, a lot of this ice was moving through the Canadian archipelago, as you can see there. And there's lots of export through the Fram Strait, lots of melting. Um, and you can actually click on different regions here. Um, this is uh, Cryos, the Center for Polar Observation and Modeling Data Portal, the European Scientific, uh, Science Agency. Um, and you can click on data here for a particular region and see ice thickness at specific locations over time. So you can see how the ice thickness changes over time. So most areas it will be decreasing, but some areas it will be increasing as the ice thins and maybe piles up um, in specific locations. So those are the, the devils in the details. Now, if we look, uh, we're moving on, these are the trajectories of the sea ice volume over time. So every month is decreasing. And if we look at the, if we do a fit, an exponential trend fit, you know, around, around 2020 to 2021, we go to zero sea ice volume in the Arctic if we follow this trajectory. You know, if it's a linear trajectory, it might last to 2030. I'd put my money on closer to 2020. Read Peter Wadhams' book, A Farewell to Ice, um, and uh, you can get details as to what's going to happen. So this is showing the wave height. So this is in terms of meters. Uh, we've got 10 meter waves here. You know, this is an extremely warm area right now. This is a colder area. High winds are generated high waves. Um, if you look at the waves around the ice, 1.7 meters, but look at the period of the waves, 6.7 seconds. On this side, three seconds, 7.1 seconds. On this side is typically five to six, seven seconds or three to seven. On this side, the period 14 seconds, 13 seconds, 10. Okay, so the periods are longer here. The waves are about a meter high or so. Over here, we drop down to about five seconds. Now, why is this important? Okay, well, it's important because it's stopping the sea ice from growing. And I've just noticed that my time is up, so I'm gonna do a part two for this video. So stay tuned for part 